Hi guys. Um, I want to talk about gun control because that's been in the news a lot and it's a pretty controversial topic. Um, I don't really have a problem with guns. I really don't. I, I see it as a good thing because I think if everybody on earth killed three other people, that less people would die of natural causes. So I think it would be helpful. But it, I also, actually, my feeling too is if, if, if we don't do that, we should eliminate guns and go back to using bows and arrows to kill one another. Because the world would be a better place if gang members killed each other in drive-by archery attacks. Just think that'd be fun to see them hanging out the window trying to shoot a shot off. <laughs> be a place I want to live. I don't know. Um, I actually, I own a gun. It's a, it's a paintball gun that I use to keep deer off my bird feeder. I absolutely hate deer. But I realized that I what an asshole I am for having a bird feeder and then just opening my door and letting my cat outside. Because it's entrapment. It's like, oh, here, come, dine. Don't mind the godless killing machine. We just keep him around and make us feel better because we can cultivate need. I don't know. Right. Or like, like, you know, free buffet if you survive the mass murderer. Like, I got you guys all Captain Crunch, but there's a sniper. It's just not nice. And it's interesting what we feed and what we don't. We all feed birds. We love, everyone loves to have a bird feeder. And like squirrels, though, nobody likes squirrels. But squirrels don't bother you. Birds shit all over everything. And we're feeding them ammunition. When was the last time you came back to your car and a squirrel had taken a dump on your windshield? <laughs> Doesn't happen. Squirrels are decent creatures. Oh, man. I've been unemployed. I'm unemployed. I've been unemployed for about this long. Um, which is great, because now what I do is I sleep till about noon. And then I get up and I play... Uh, or get up for a little while, and then I go back to sleep, but this time with sweatpants, so it's different. And then I play uh, Cityville on Facebook, which is Farmville after the Industrial Revolution. So it's up modernized, you know? And then I just sort of exist. And it's weird when you're unemployed because you don't really have a purpose if you don't know what you want to do. If you're unemployed and you're a plumber, it's fine. You know you want to go plumb. <laughs> But if you're a, someone like me, you recently graduated college, and you're just existing. Like, I, I went to Emerson College, which is, a, which is a communication school for socially awkward kids. And uh, the great thing about Emerson was that I knew what I was supposed to do there. I was supposed to go to class, get good grades, get drunk, and make irresponsible sexual decisions, and I was doing it right. And now I'm just like, I don't know, you know? But the sad thing is, you know, I, I get down over this. And my mother was trying to explain to me, like, Ben, you know, a lot of people go through a tough times. You're not alone. You're not the only person that has these issues. And I'm like, like, that's supposed to make me feel better. I understand the intent. But I don't get it. Like, other people's suffering means that I'm not. Like, oh, you have lung cancer. Don't worry. Lots of people die of lung cancer. You've got two months. Hang in there, champ. Like, it doesn't, but the sad thing is, too, is that my parents are proud of me, because I'm actually unemployed, I was working a seasonal job. So I was employed for a while, and I graduated college, and I make it on my own in Boston, barely. Because with today's economy, the mark of success for my generation is, Ben is able to be a poor person all by himself. <laughs> so uh, switching topics here, you guys ever wonder who the first astronaut was to jerk off in outer space? <laughs> it has to have happened, right? Someone wants that notoriety. Someone at NASA has wanted to come down and brag about that. That's all I'm saying. And like John Glenn, the first trip was probably way too noble to take care of it. But these guys live on the ISS for six months. You can't tell me it hasn't happened. And I was wondering too a lot about that because if you're in space, right, there's no gravity. So as you finish, is there like a kick from a gun? You know, like it would send you. Like if you were drifting away from the ship, could you just come back? You know. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a play on words. <laughs> and I, I, I think it's great, too. Like, when I was a kid, right, I had a rule because I was 15, and I traveled all over the place for uh, chess tournaments because I was a cool kid. And I had a rule. Every state that I visited, that's what I would do, just to, like, mark my territory. And so I feel like if I ever got into space and had 10 free minutes, I wouldn't even enjoy it. It would just be like, this is just business. I have to, like, I have to do this for mankind. Like, for God and my country, I must officially mark this as claimed. I don't know. And then, like, sex in space, too, right? So I wonder if that sex in space, would you really have to use birth control? Because I feel like the re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere would just take care of it. And if it didn't, you want to raise that kid anyways, because that child was sent from space. That's the closest we'll ever have to Superman. So, all right, I, uh, I'm going to sing a song, because I don't have anything else to talk about that I feel like talking about.
No, no, I'll turn it back over. Somebody else. Worth I still like the name Todd. I'm soft. 